Hello everyone. Welcome to Mind Speak on Hello Global. I am Samik Sen. Joining us today Mr. Amit Sana, Indian pop artist and playback singer, rose to fame as a finalist on Indian Idol season 1. His versatile talent spans across Hindi and regional languages, showcasing a blend of classical and contemporary music. So, first of all, uh, Amit, thank you so much for taking out this time for us. Welcome to Hello Global. Thank you Samik. It's a pleasure uh, to be uh, to be here. and i am happy okay so let me begin by asking you what inspired you to pursue a career in singing actually uh, inspiration it was never like an inspiration inspiration thing i was into music since uh, i was very young sure. so um i started learning at the age of i guess 8 uh, or 9 or something like that you know before 10 before i was 10 years old so i started learning and then i was good in music i used to win competitions i used to um uh, i used to be good in classical music okay uh, so basically it was like um, i was okay with studies not bad not great either but music was one um, area where i was i could excel so i always it was always close to me it it, it always was um a way to prove myself in some way you know so uh, yeah as 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 i started learning more and de- delving deeper into it, it it started becoming a part of me and um, yeah i mean i i thought that i should take up music for sure and uh, uh, yeah that's how it happened <laughs> okay so how did indian idol happen to you indian idol happened to me uh, actually um, the promos promos were out and uh, although i was learning classical and uh, uh, but i always wanted to pursue my uh, music in this direction sure. in my music career in this direction like uh, you know we used to listen to all the pop albums at that point of time you know that used to the indie pop music was in yes, full yes. rage at that time in 2000 since 2000 i think yeah I, or maybe i think uh, 97 98 yes So, late 90s yeah yeah late 90s uh, so um i think uh, we were all very inspired by that and uh, sonu ji was a major major uh, inspiration for me during that period of time for sure and uh, yeah that's that love he used to make me just go crazy you know like <laughs> how can someone be so handsome and at the same time so well spoken uh, so dashing and uh, i mean such a brilliant singer without any doubt okay. so uh, yeah he was a major inspiration and then uh, yeah cooky pop stars uh, that was one show uh, where i also went for the audition but unfortunately couldn't get auditioned so okay. that also acted as a major push for me to get into uh, you know indian idol okay so let's talk about your albums okay what was the inspiration behind your albums chaldi and yaadi Well, Chaldiye was a part of my contract uh, sure. from um, uh, Sony BMG, so um, uh, that was produced and uh, produced by uh, Sony BMG, and that uh, during that time, my second album, although was I think it was um, a very personal, uh, uh, what do you say, um, personal thing for me. I really wanted to showcase uh, my kind of. I know the kind of music I listen to and the kind of music of I want to uh bring out for people. Uh so Yaade uh, my second album uh it was a personal journey. Uh I involved myself completely into it around like more around 2 years it took uh for me to actually understand. It was very new for me. I mean I didn't know how music making works. um i just came from bilai been just a year and i had no idea how the whole music business works how you make albums how it is produced you know the whole um, part of everything about making an album uh, you know and marketing and marketing it and you know uh, taking taking it out in front of the people so um, but yeah i could do it and uh, i think it was really loved by everyone um, i could i would see uh, uh, while going on the road while driving i could see people uh, listening to it on their in their cars in their car stereos 
it mm-hmm. blasting uh, you know music blasting outside the car windows <laughs> so uh, yeah it was an amazing journey for me and uh, i really felt happy that i could uh, give something nice to people so how was your experience working with stalwarts like anu malik and ravi shegel and many others in fact so many music composers any particular memory which is still there you know amazing there experience too. i i yeah a lot of memories actually i do remember my recording sessions how they went and how scared i was how nervous i was um uh, because i never had really a recording studio experience so it was all very very new uh, i remember my uh, experience with sandesh shandilya ji okay. uh, during my first ever uh, recording for a movie uh, for a movie song uh original movie song <laughs> so he used to he is he is there and uh, there was this very naughty kind of a song and uh, i couldn't understand like i couldn't understand expression well and since it's a naughty song from a uh, from from a hero side so it was like you know i really have to be naughty and uh, i was very cautious about it and my father is there and <laughs> so uh, so yeah i mean like uh, then eventually i could do it then with anumalik i'll anumalik ji i'll say um i was pretty scared i mean like when when i was working with him and uh, he's a very um, i'll say intimidating person Oh, oh. No, he's very loving, very okay. sweet, but he's he's a very serious man, and uh, you know his uh, height and everything, and he's got his big big hands. So, um, but at the same time, he's a musical genius for sure. And yes. uh, to understand those nuances that a music director wants you to understand, it's quite challenging for someone uh, who has not been in the industry. Uh, so, um, yeah, it was. but scary i i i didn't know that i could uh, sing that song thi meri daasta uh because uh matlab do you feel like yeah i can do it but at the same but but when you go in the studio and standing in front of the mic where the mic is catching every small uh, detail of your voice and the way you are you know put, uh, you know um uh, yeah i mean using your voice so there there are a lot of chances that you make a lot of mistakes mm. you know so uh, yeah that is pretty challenging but eventually the song turned out well and i i remember him um, really loving me at that point of time and telling me that yeah um you have done great uh, for 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 some for a beginner and uh, then i'll say with rabbi shergil um it was superb he's like a He's a very uh, chilled out person. Okay. And yeah, though I have we, we, even I, I it was like a fan moment for me when I I uh, I went there. I got a call and I went there for the recording. Uh, I was a little nervous, not to mention. But yeah, the song went great. I mean, like uh, his his uh, uh, what to say uh, the way he explained it to me the whole uh, uh, you know uh, the movie. Uh, Uh, scene and everything uh, i think it it went great and i still love that song personally okay so mohabbat lutaunga from indian idol still has an epic fan base please tell us more about it mohabbat lutaunga is a very very special song uh, and i'm glad that uh, it still has its fan base and people haven't uh, forgotten it although it's been almost 20 years uh, so it's like um, uh we were like in only the top two people and you know like wo hota hai na uh ki aap jaise aapko pehle pehle ka thoda pata chale lagta hai ki aage ye hone wala hai aisa hone wala hai so we were like uh, top 5 or top 4 remaining and like uh, and we were being told that aage ja ke aapko ek gana aisa kuch milega jo sirf top two ke liye hi rahega usme se kisi ek ko uh you know uh matlab you know har dono har kisi ko apne andaaz mein usko kuch karna padega aise एकदम नया गाना रहेगा एंड सो वी वर लाइक ऑल वेरी थ्रिल एक्साइटेड एंड लाइक कौन जाएगा टॉप टू में किसको मिलेगा ये गाना सो फाइनली आई मीन आई वाज ब्लेस्ड इनफ दैट आई आई रीच्ड अप टू द फाइनल फाइनल टॉप फाइनल पावर बीन द फाइनलिस्ट सो या इट वाज अ सेशन विद राजू सिंह जी वेयर वी वर सपोज टू एक्सप्लेन हिम हाउ 
we are conceiving the song like how i am conceiving the song so first abhijit went and um, then he came back um uh, pretty pretty early he came back he was very clear what he wanted and uh, then i went and i had like this millions of ideas but uh, since i don't know how the music making works and you know like the whole production process of a song you know how yeah. it is arranged and uh, programmed and all those things you know like so i am trying my level best to uh, explain it to him okay mujhe aisa chahiye you know i just want ballad kind of the larger than life and us samay to hum log ye sab sunte the backstreet boys on boys own yes, yes, and you know uh, these kind of boy bands were like a full rage matlab wo zindagi the so i wanted some something like that to happen with my song that kind of a uh, feel i wanted for my song so i i really uh, took a lot of time for uh, myself to explain explain to him and uh, he really understood it well although i i think i really confused him uh, but he really understood it very well and the most intense intrinsic interesting part happened that when i was recording the song um uh, for him like for 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 my performance what we used to do, like uh, every time we used to go to uh, like whenever we had a performance so we were given a track and something like that and yeah. you know we used to record it for our own reference that how we are singing it you know so that we can listen and listen to okay. it and practice it well uh, and figure out our mistakes so the same way this song was also getting recorded you know you know for me to understand how i'm singing it and during the recording i uh, did something interesting and he said that it is this is very interesting that scatting part na 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 so i did this thing uh during the recording and he he said it is this is coming out very well you should keep it and you should record it properly so then i recorded it and uh, then i think it it became kind of a signature uh, yes. you know um uh, that a signature of the song uh and then i took this uh in the finale also and in my album also in my own version of the song it is there so i think people remember this part and the rest is history basically yeah i mean yeah, yeah, i know i guess okay so how has your classical music training influenced your contemporary music i think classical training music has helped me immensely because it really opens up um your mind you know um, um that musical uh musical muscles i'll say that sure you know the uh, you know the, they get really nurtured and you can just think anything and uh, nothing is like seems alien to you after that after you have you have you have uh, prior, you know like trained in uh, classical music so then everything becomes like an inspiration every kind of music every genre inspires you and a part of you goes a part of it goes inside you you know unknowingly so yeah that 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 much richer you uh, become after that you know everything is just going in because you are not scared of any form or anything because you know that uh, you can use your um, you, you can sing that part so more normally what happens that singers who are not trained in classical music or not well trained they they skip certain kinds of genres some certain kinds of music doesn't appeal to them because they cannot sing it so with classical music that limitation is gone yeah so you start uh, you know uh, taking um, inspiration from all different kinds of genres so that has helped me a lot i think um so hence i i can inculcate uh, sufi and or i can uh, you know a lot of kind of styles inside myself of course okay so let's talk about from indian idol till today okay let's talk about some of the challenges that you have faced i mean say mumbai is a very um uh, i'll say a challenging place a very um different place a very very big city um with a very vibrant culture you know the working culture is very different the kind of attitude people have i'm not saying in good or bad sense but they are so much evolved and um 
people coming from uh, smaller towns and smaller cities actually find it difficult to adjust mm. and understand and cope up with the kind of work culture that we have here you know um to really understand what the other person means uh, when he's saying yes or when he's saying no or you know when he's saying a particular thing to you so that is one thing and then uh, in what indian indian idol was a massive platform you know we were like everywhere and of course uh, everyone was attracted to um, to us to everyone not just me and abhijit and rahul but i think whoever was uh, there i mean like for um, top 10 everyone got the same kind of love and uh, respect and adulation so uh, that was difficult actually to deal with people and you know not to be rude at the same time to be close and because he, industry mein thoda sa alag sa mahol hai yahan par you know everything is um very uh, uh, kya bolna chahiye usko delicate a small um, gesture can annoy someone you know you can't be completely honest and you can't be completely i mean like you can be fake because a lot of, of people actually uh, you know they they think that that's the way and but unfortunately for me that was not the way ever so but at the same time you cannot be direct very direct on their face and uh, you know tell them what you really think about it rather than you have to be a little bit diplomatic and you know answer it in a right uh, in the right for a right possible way so that was quite a challenge uh, to uh, to for for me to understand this place and then there was shows lot of traveling and not finding out enough time for riyas and uh, you know <laughs> बहुत सारे डिस्ट्रैक्शन आ जाते हैं सो मेनी डिस्ट्रैक्शन अपियर इन लाइफ यू वॉन्ट टू इंजॉय एन एवरी थिंग लाइक मनी दैट यू कैन बाई एनी थिंग इन एवरी थिंग सो समेर दैट गेट लेस ग्राउंडेड यू नो एंड देन कम्स द डिफरेंट फेस वैन यू नो यू अगेंस्ट स्टार्ट ऑब्जर्विंग uh the negative aspects of you know your own behavior i mean you know that that distractions finally uh you know um have an effect on you um and and your on your life uh, so and then you start get noticing them and then you again mm-hmm. start pulling yourself together understanding that i think is uh, i think some kind of maturity that happens sure. over time you know and then i think yeah uh, then the learn real learning starts i think so it's like a pretty long journey i mean like first first you see all that fame and you know um, popularity and you know all that you you see uh, attention all those things and then as as time passes things you know become a little uh, mellow sure you know, with time and then you also start maturing and then your perspective start to um, you know uh, widen up you know and then a lot of changes start happening inside uh, so you start finding out yourself in the city course. you know <laughs> so where is exactly you are located what is your place in the city or you know uh, in the industry or whatever you call you know and uh, i think that's quite a process uh, to undergo through and i think i'm still going through that and um, uh, it's it's i'll say that it's amazing because it helps you grow as an artist as of a course. person um your understanding of things really become better uh, your music becomes far more richer um and uh, because there's a lot of quest happening inside so um uh, i'll say that indian idol has to play a very very big role in this because it really sped up the process and i think uh, to some it might think yeah isme kya jaldi kya hua i mean i'm uh, i'm still growing you know, people think that you should like you should be all grown up in uh, 15 20 years like yeah for i think everyone has their own pace 
ಮೊಹಮ್ಮದ್ ರಫಿ ಸಾಬ್ you know with that kind of arrangement with the 60s kind of arrangement of course and with his voice exactly and just the nuances the phrasing the singing style it is just plain mohammad rafi sahab but yeah of course if if you really closely monitor there, there are certain spaces certain places where you can figure out that okay this is but to uh, i think that's just like a uh, 1 to 2% kind of or 5% maybe anomaly that we can notice uh, but otherwise uh, yeah i i think it's a little bit scary but i guess uh what ai cannot do is produce a very original voice because uh if you ask something original copying is one thing and being original is another thing too uh, you know uh, maybe uh, there can be a partial success in that but there cannot be a complete success because an original voice uh, is a original voice you know uh, it cannot be and up produced by a machine it's like you see all those pictures these days you know that ai generated pictures of you know of, of a beautiful uh, landscapes or you know people you say you know different different kind of <laughs> like bizarre thing and all but at the end of the day you understand that this is ai you can figure out after you have seen four or five pictures you can actually start figuring out this is ai and this is not ai so so i think that will also happen in terms of music because human mind i think is uh, far more ahead sure far more ahead it cannot be contemplated the uh, the avenues it still have uh, cannot be contemplated so uh, i think ai will mostly be like a tool uh, but i suppose i i personally i'll say that uh, uh, for music everything should be as organic as possible because that is where that is how you feel happy after doing something you know sure. an arranger or a programmer or whoever is involved in the music making process every small element if it is coming out from you then it makes you even more happier because that is where the growth is you know you understand you you, you it makes you happier that now you have the ability to do that you know and that is what happiness is why we are otherwise i am now if i come into a general sense of uh, using ai in anything any front i feel that it is going to, what it is going to do is like take away your happiness um your purpose of uh, doing a particular work in life of whatever you you are you are doing there is i mean like there is a purpose if, if 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 being a human being we will not work then what else we will do that yes. is the sole purpose of our life you know to work to do something in life and to do it well to grow with it to learn more with every passing day i think ai is going to take is taking that away yes so that those small small things you know the small small learning small small successes you know they make actually feel you happy and go through that day no matter you you might be feeling unhappy for some other reason but that small thing that you have learned that day makes you happy makes you elated you know that your work makes you happy for that day and make you look ahead for the future so that way i think i don't really like ai 
of course it's a temporary distraction but uh, uh, like you know it can end up uh, spoiling certain opportunities okay for many people that's what i feel you never know like you know a good opportunity uh, people just uh, simply uh, try something uh, through ai and somebody who is a genuine talent maybe like you know they end up missing out on those opportunities i think that ways i think people will always um um find that space where they can do well of course you know maybe temporary it might temporarily it might happen that someone knowing ai might do a better presentation or something hmm. but in the long run if, the, if yeah. everyone That's knows ai possible. then that no, will be the level it's it's a level playing ground for everyone if everyone knows ai but the what is happening is that that earlier where you know as i said earlier it's like your work satisfaction is decreasing True. you know the more a human mind learns you know the more things you know dexterity through your hands and your body and everything you you know it's all related it's it's uh, what do you call that it it as long as, as it is physiological it is uh, psychological both physiological and psychological uh, satisfaction has to be there you have True. to learn your body also has to learn and your mind also has to learn both are interconnected so that happiness is going away through because if the machine is doing it then you are just giving it commands and you know just using your mind there is no body involvement and all that okay so i mean this is my last question to you since you have seen it all yeah. okay so what would be your uh, uh, advice to aspiring singers and musicians especially coming from small towns okay first of all i'll say i'll not i have not seen it all i have much <laughs> to see much to experience uh, i have hardly been there honestly uh but yeah as for the experience part i'll just say that um i'll say that don't get overwhelmed by anything because when you get overwhelmed your mind stops um understanding a lot of things you know it it forms judgments and um, you know things become more difficult and challenging sure mind should be in our control our emotions should be in our control and uh, everyone is good people are nice and uh, don't blame yourself for anything be nice be kind to yourself um observe learn uh from the environment and also see what are your strengths because some many a times uh not many times i'll say it's like 99% times we only learn by seeing others like if they can do it why i can't do it okay. that is the general perception of everyone but we don't know what is the history behind and where that person is coming from what kind of training that person had what kind of uh parentage that person had you know so many so many even in fact where you are born and brought up your place you know it also has a huge effect on you on your uh, psychology so and that that thing differentiates everyone from everyone so i think that uh, one big advice i'll say that everyone should meditate you know they should make meditation a part of their life uh, meditation really helps open up your mind uh, rather uh, being confused from every from, from all the information that is coming to us from um, our surroundings it helps us actually filter it out channelize it and um, so taking the information to take to taking the information that works for you that sure. is more synonymous to you so that way meditation is really really helpful and rest everything is fine just you know just we should need to trust ourselves and we should i think uh, never complain about anything because complaining makes us weaker so we should take charge of all our mistakes and even if someone has done something to us we should not blame or curse that other person that because of him or her it happened this happened to me you know because then again that we are like making ourselves weaker only mm-hmm. so uh, i think if we uh, i mean if this is just a little bit of my understanding that i'm trying to share i hope it resonates with the uh, people definitely uh, who are view, view watching this okay so thank you so much amit it was lovely talking to you thank you samik okay.
thank you so much very insightful also and uh, like you know i wish you all the best okay lot of projects thank you so future. much and thank you so much thank for you. taking up this time for us thank you my pleasure thank you